the best film about spatial awareness, the pathology of rooms and interiors, and finding a wholly political enunciation, inherent relevance, of staging these cognitive transformations. Jonathan Glazer has impressed with his ambitious features since 2000's Sexy Beast, 2004's Birth was one of the more commendable horror films of the 2000s, and 2013's Under the Skin, one of the more commendable films of this century. The zone of interest composes the psychologies which enabled the philosophies of the more extreme hierarchies, apartheids in human history, which is perhaps the most radical stance to take when exploring the pathology of spaces. I am reminded of Borges, and then of his Deutsches Requiem, the vision of an ideal Germany, a picturesque perfect life, one that had been deserving and granted upon the subject, motivated both the elimination of an other and the ignorance to the removal of said other, indeed the identification of others as a validation of one's own chosen, specialised warranting of idyllic bliss. Important to note aesthetics and idealism as the more backbones of a radical pathos as severe as Nazi Germany's, more important to consider where this manifests in historical contexts enabled since the Nazi Holocaust. One can consider the indifference and supremacist elitism which characterised the callous brutality of South Africa during much of the 20th century, consider how the United States segregated the African-American populace prior to the civil rights legislation, and most tragically, most unfortunately, consider how a state founded seemingly justified by the Nazi Holocaust itself is willing to preserve a paradise at the expense of another new designated other. The Zone of Interest is a film which explains the pathologies of pre-revolutionary France, a caste system influenced India, the lavish luxuries of European colonizers throughout their global conquests. To communicate space as a bastion of contextual modernity, as Michael Mann often has, or to display a contemporary as a psychological nexus of behavioral possibilities, East Asian filmmakers as disparate and diverse as Zhang Lu, Liu Ye, and Yogi Kato, in one or some instances, is entirely incredible. That such a complex, intricate, amphro ecosystem could be summarized as a pulsating, indecisive, inconsistent organism, far removed from trite fairy tales celebrated from Robert Altman, where Glazer does one possibly better is by resurfacing via time travel the dangers of a spatial idealization. One of my favorite paintings, almost my favorite even, is Fragonard's The Swing. Here it is. A more ideal space I rarely imagine. Most of my ideal spaces pertain to gardens in some manner or another, and yet to what degree is this space operating in spite of or enabled inherently via the suffering of French serfs of the pre-revolution era? There was an infamous historical text, Hitler's Willing Executioners. Possibly one of the more important takeaways from the zone of interest is that the executioners, the German populace at large in this case, need not be willing executioners, just indifferent associates, accomplices. This is a dynamic which can be observed in films as diverse as Fritz Lang's Metropolis, to Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, or Bertolucci's The Last Emperor. Throw in Lean's Lawrence of Arabia also. That marked contrast between the affluent, the safe, the serene, and the violent, the oppressive, the genocidal, the sadistic, the psychopathic. In 1980, Helma Sanders Brahms composed and released a highly personal film titled Germany Pale Mother about her parents' experiences before and during then after the war. It depicts two individuals simply trying to survive during that tumultuous epoch, and the zone of interest also reaches into history, identifying the recorded commander at Auschwitz, Rudolf Hoss, and examining instead were the hierarchical, hierarchical beneficiaries of the Nazi regime, not merely just the common people, though as extras those are featured too, but how the commandants, and namely their wide-eyed smiling families, went along with it. How did Eva Braun perceive the ruthlessness of Hitler? Imagine the ignorance of Hitler's pet dogs. We witness a microcosm of such speculations within Glazer's zone of interest, although to claim it is a film about Nazi Germany is reductionist, it examines instead why Nazi Germany is that extreme example so often invoked today, since it occurred, and why it has survived in the public popular consciousness as a relevant analogy to contemporary events, potentially or even inevitably. How could people have let this happen? Walk around any affluent suburb. In Sydney, I have a number of them, north and east, to choose from. How do they feel about people suffering in other parts of the city or the country? Well, if good fortune came to them, which they feel as though they wouldn't have received unless they deserved it, then those others who experience misfortune will experience fortune when they deserve it too. Or maybe they just believe it is all a matter of luck and belie their responsibility to their fellow human it is God or fate's business, not theirs, remotely. And that may be true, 
but think for a moment how Rudolf Hoss's wife justifies her own lifestyle, or even how she seemingly doesn't feel the need to. She is so happy with her circumstances that she needn't bother. The surest sign that humans may commit to savage violence and systematic repression is a proposed promise of paradise, material, spiritual, societal, familial. These are the most immediate surface level takeaways of the zone of interest. I implore anyone else to share any more on this. One of the most explicitly entropic films of the past 10 years, or at least one of the most impressively memorable, assertively filmic, thematically courageous and aesthetically penetrating the aesthetic of the zone of interest is not to look pretty, not solely. It is to demonstrate the ley lines of aesthetic itself for a poised political philosophic purpose, challenging filmmakers to explore new avenues of cinematic composition within that rote art film slash festival paradigm. Glazer demands you move on from such a picturesque, still Wes Anderson-esque aesthetic pathology for its similarities to an Aryan ideal are far too stifling, troubling, and if nothing else, archaic. After the zone of interest, what purpose is there to employ this aesthetic again to illustrate the developed world? If we want to avoid Nazism as desperately as possible, maybe there are more mental similarities to sever than we had initially considered. The justification of hierarchy has creeped into our contemporary world, one which defines itself against Nazism completely, and Glazer has exposed this prim, poised, symmetrical post-Apple aesthetic for what it is. And hopefully, all those who view his exemplary film will do so too.